Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I told you yesterday we would be even more, uh, I can't remember what phrase I used, but you know, yesterday I was in a tank top. Even more unprofessional, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, so, wow, this is, this is like life. There it is. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I think you should give them a panoramic I, we, we view. We will do a quick swirl around the lake uh, before we hop off. But um, we actually wanted this morning to have a quick conversation about um, drinking or not drinking at sort of family functions. So it's funny because on Facebook today, my memories came up from four years ago. And four years ago, we were at the lake. We do this lake thing annually. My brothers and their families come home and Quinn comes and we meet with my dad and, and stepmom at the lake. And this year we've rented a house and it's really, really lovely. And even though we talked about not getting together, we decided to do it anyway. And we're really sad because my New York brother and sister-in-law, our New York brother and sister-in-law, yes, Wes and Delphine, <laughs> aren't here. Cause, cause they just, they couldn't make it cause of COVID. So we're sad about that, but everybody else is here. But four years ago, my memories showed up and it was, um, us at this lake weekend and there's no pictures of Maz because Maz was here. He was physically present, but he was so disengaged that when my brothers saw him next, which probably was the next summer at this lake weekend, they could not believe the difference because last July, four years ago, Dr. Mary was drinking heavily. Then he got sober in February. And then when we all got together again in July was their chance to see him for the first time as a sober member of this family. And they both called me after the weekend just to tell me how, what, what a transformation it was. So the, the topic for you today, Dr. Mary, is uh, sort of this notion of people think they might do better in family environments, which can be stressful, if they can have a little bit to drink but now you're on, you've had both sides of it. So what's your thought on that? Um, that is a absolutely horribly bad idea and it doesn't work. Um, I've, I've taught uh, quite a few of my friends in AA have said the same thing as, uh, you know, they, a lot of their friends say to them, well, I can't believe you're an alcoholic. You never, you never saw you drink. It's because you get into this weird routine and I, I, I've only recently had to even admitted this to myself like when you go out, you deliberately don't drink as much because you have, I'd like to have my, and you always think of it as my drink and it actually ends up being about my four or five drinks that you like to have in a place that you think is safe. So when you're out somewhere and you're trying not to act like you need a drink, it's incredibly stressful. And I think, mm. Because and you, and you don't sleep. Oh, we we listened to this great podcast about this um, this woman who's actually more famous for for her own right than I, Dana thought it was funny when I said you know the woman who's oh, married to the it's Glennon Doyle <laughs> captain of the the American <laughs> football team. Yeah, Glennon Doyle. I I never actually knew she no. actually you know she's an incredibly um, professional. She's got a PhD in. <laughs> no, she doesn't. But I thought she, she was a doctor or something. But no, she's an incredibly. No, that's Brene Brown. <laughs> She's an incredibly professional woman in her own right, but she she used to teach, and she said, I put everything into my teaching, and then I went home and drink, and I thought, my God, that is what I did. Yeah. And, you know, you don't sleep because you can't, because you're, you're agitated. So, you know, you think you're engaged at some level, but you're just absolutely not. Yeah, and now you're so engaged. I mean, yeah, we got our, uh, one of our, our nieces, um, Dana and her, are, are cooking our breakfast. She's six. She's six. We had to take a break. She's quite... <laughs> it's a union break from making pancakes <laughs> so we could do this. But <laughs> but it's fantastic. I think I was the first one up this morning, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
that, that was a little um, wavy way around the topic, but the topic really is this idea of if you um, think that you are better drinking to try to sort of manage the stress of family reunions, family get-togethers, family socials, which admittedly, even stone cold sober, can be stressful. Um, I'm here to tell you, as the observer, you are not. You were so, you were so disengaged. Yeah. You were here, but you weren't present at all. And when you were present, it was kind of unpleasant. And now you're, you're present and you are engaged and you are an equal and valuable member of the family. Because when I, oh, when I when I first got sober, I actually said to Dana, I just think I'm so boring. Yeah, he thought he was an interesting person drinking. Uh, and I just wasn't. You know, no. it, it doesn't it doesn't mix. And uh, I'm going to take Dana's word for this that I'm not boring. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's your weekend thought. If you're off to see family this weekend and you're packing all kinds of alcohol just to get through it maybe maybe try a little bit less if you can but i'm also not advocating for trying to go uh stone cold sober if you're an active drinker in front of the family because uh we can talk about that at yeah. another time but the uh the delirium tremor phase you don't want to do that at the family reunion so don't 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 leave it all at home if you need it but see what you can do see if you can be a little bit more present emotionally, physically, it does, a little more engaged. It does make all the difference. I know I'm saying this from being sober for over three years, but this is, it's, it's fantastic. You can, it's not, it's, you put more stress on yourself trying to hide what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I just had no idea. One of the most freeing things about becoming sober is just the weight of, you don't, there's no need to just badly lie about everything. And it's just, you can just say the truth. It's so much easier. <laughs> it truly is. Yeah, you don't need to be an alcoholic to uh, live by that, by that law. It's always easier to just tell the truth, to just live in truth. Yeah. So that's our thought for the weekend. Quick tour, lover. Um, oh yeah, let me just also say this. We're gonna start compiling these into weekly emails, which I will send out if anybody's interested, if you want to share them with people. Um, they may be useful. So uh, if you would like to get that email, they'll go out Saturday mornings. I will never do anything else with your emails. I won't pass them along. I won't inundate you. I won't ask you for money. Um, well, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can send me a note on Facebook or you can write to Dana at extraordinaryextraordinary.com and I'll get you added to the email. The first one's gonna go out this week. For a little while, we will put them on my um, blog and then on the Facebook page just to try to get people paying attention to uh, getting signed up if you want them. And if you don't want them, that's okay too. But it's sort of fun to see all of you uh, watching this morning. Thanks, Carrie and Carla and oh, John well, yeah. and Bonnie and uh, whoever else was on that I couldn't see. So I'm going to show you the lake because it's worth seeing. Yeah, I got your cup. And uh, have an excellent weekend. We'll see you soon. Not too bad. I see the appeal of the lake home. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Bye.